what is happening in North Dakota with something called the Fu Fang mm-hmm. Group. I'm really interested mm-hmm. to hear what this is and to hear you just kind of dig into it. What the heck is this? Why should we care? How is this connected to what we're talking about? Uh, so at its most basic level, uh, Fu Fang Group is a uh, Chinese uh, producer of human food and animal feed ingredients. They do this via wet corn milling. Uh, so we have wet corn milling operations, numerous of them in the U.S. Uh, they make different products. You can make almost 30 different products uh, just from corn. Uh, starches, sweeteners, texturizers uh, among them as well uh, are things like lysine uh, or phalene, D-methionine, threonine. These are all things that go into animal feed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and help keep the animals healthy and increase their their productivity, whether it's you know eggs or milk or or their meat, uh, you know the quality of their meat. And so these are very uh, kind of unknown but critical things. If you look on the back of any uh, bag of uh, pet food, for example, uh, you'll see almost all of those ingredients named, and they're all made from you know in some way uh, they're they're derived from corn processing. So Fu Feng is a very large and and prominent and uh, politically connected company in China. And they want to come to the U.S. and uh, build a wet corn mill in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And they started that process just in, to, in middle just of 2020. Just to make money? Or, or is there a, a, a bigger goal there? I would not put a wet corn mill in Grand Forks, North Dakota if I had uh, other options available to me. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, hmm. Availability of the feedstock, which is corn, uh, water concerns as well. Uh, but there is something in Grand Forks that uh, continues to seem to be a target of interest for uh, what you would call like subnational uh, Chinese influence campaigns, which is trying to work directly with local uh, or city and uh, state leaders without the involvement of the United States government. So these subnational campaigns uh, continue to target Grand Forks, North Dakota, uh, mainly because they have a, a little known but very important uh, Air Force base there called Grand Forks Air Force Base. So this is I'm already, uh, I'm frightened. certainly from the I'm, national security I'm side. I'm frightened yeah. by this already. <laughs> but okay, continue. Yeah, so it's, uh, like I said, from an economic standpoint, there, there are a lot of places that, uh, you know, Fu Feng allegedly considered in Nebraska or Iowa or Illinois where it would make a lot more sense to put a, a, a wet corn mill. Uh, but, you know, the, they down-selected to Grand Forks and, and the city officials, by and large, of Grand Forks, North Dakota, are looking at this uh, purely on its economic merits, wh- whatever they may or may not be, and uh, you know, really disclaiming or disregarding any sort of potential risk to U.S. national security for a ccp link company uh, establishing itself you know, 13, 14 miles from this Air Force base. Uh, there are bigger economic interests at work in the community and in the state uh, that you're seeing the state level push for this as well. Uh, it's somewhat complex, and uh, d- certainly don't want to bore the listeners, but uh, the Fu Feng project is sort of looked at as a phase one to uh, dramatically increasing natural gas uh, transmission through the state, allowing the state of North Dakota to drill more, you know, to frack and uh, pull more oil out of the ground uh, so that they don't have, you know, it's, it's, they have caps on how much methane or natural gas they can flare off for their oil production. So utilizing that and, and piping that natural gas allows them to drill for more oil. Uh, and it also unlocks uh, a much larger economic project, even than the Fu Feng one, which is the Northern Plains Nitrogen Project in Grand Forks. So you're seeing uh, a lot of these interests on the economic and political side come together and then be you know, harnessed and, and weaponized and taken advantage of by uh, China's subnational campaign apparatus uh, and really getting American political and economic officials to uh, ultimately do the bidding of, of what the CCP wants, which is to put one of their own companies right there next door to an Air Force base. But what do they plan to do with the Air Force base? Well, the Air Force base, you know, the, there are aspects of the base that are not publicly disclosed in terms of mission sets or or things that they do there. Uh, there is certainly a role that the base plays from a uh, uh, surveillance and reconnaissance standpoint. Uh, it's the primary home for the RQ-4 Global Hawk Fleet, that you know, which is our uh, long loiter surveillance drones, that, and, and those are publicly acknowledged. You know, not not revealing anything that's not out there. Uh, so those are based out of Grand Forks. It has a major mission set, uh, both from a Space Force side and an Air Force side, for uh, management and and monitoring of things that go on in the skies above, uh, whether you know a little bit closer to Earth or in outer space. And so you're talking about something that's sending a lot of data. Uh, up and down and and around the world to various U.S. installations and and allies. 
And so being able to co-locate uh, a very low visibility uh, monitoring or, or even signals capture capability uh, on uh, you know, the infrastructure of a corn mill, for example, there's a lot of metal. There's a lot of hmm. towers and there's a lot of you know, just physical things that would be very easy to sort of lose uh, some low visibility technology uh, and, and be able to, you know, intercept or monitor some of those signals. So uh, it, it's really not a, um, a wise move. Uh, and, and, given, <laughs> and, and given the push that, that the company has on for Grand Forks when they had much better options available to them, yeah. uh, economically, it really kind of begins to show us how China and U.S. officials uh, sort of work hand in hand for, for their own interests uh, instead of the interests of the United States citizens. Wow. Is this happening in other parts of the country? Because I've heard things like this before, that there mm-hmm. are other Air Force bases where suspiciously um, Chinese groups, companies have mm-hmm. decided to build or they've bought land. I think in Texas, this has actually happened. Do you know of this happening in other parts of the country? Yeah, Texas is the most famous, uh, and, and you know, God love Kyle Bass and, and his team and uh, people that he works with for for really blowing the whistle on that and turning it into a, a major national issue because it needed to be. Uh, you had a, a PLA, a People's Liberation Army, which is the military arm of the CCP uh, in China. Uh, you had one of their former a uh, high level officer in the PLA come to the U.S., establish residency here and begin purchasing. I think by the end of it, he had he accrued almost 50,000 acres of land in Texas that was allegedly for a wind farm, uh, but the property was directly in the flight path of and very close to Laughlin Air Force Base uh, in South Texas, which is where we do a lot of our uh, you know combat pilot training for the Air Force. So uh, all of the major platforms that, that the U.S. Uh, Air Force operates from a fighter jet standpoint, the F-35, the F-22, F-16, F-15, uh, all of those have a presence there at Laughlin because it's a major tr- major training installation. And so we had 50,000 acres of Chinese-owned land uh, that, that was right, wow. you know, right adjacent to those properties. So, uh, again, uh, a very clear uh, and deliberate, you know, pattern of purchases and commercial deals, uh, you know, that are disguised to mask Chinese involvement or Chinese interest close to our military installations. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here.